My name is Alanis King, and this right here is a 2012 Ferrari California. It's a 453 horsepower V8 Grand Tour with a very interesting reputation, and I cannot wait to tell you all about it today. But first, I should tell you, this Ferrari California is now available on cars and bids. You can check out more photos, see the full spec list, or maybe even bid on it at the link in the description of this video. Before we get to this car, let's talk about how the California came to be. The California is a pretty modern Ferrari. It debuted at the Paris Motor Show in 2008, and it was a big move for Ferrari, mainly because this car had so many attributes the company hadn't put in a car before. Let me list those attributes off for you. And reminder, these are all firsts for Ferrari, okay? This was the first Ferrari road car with a mid-front mounted V8, dual-clutch automatic transmission, folding hardtop convertible, multi-link rear suspension, and direct fuel injection. The California debuted as Ferrari's new entry-level model, and it had a very entry-level price of $200,000. That's about $285,000 today when you account for inflation. The California was a grand tour, not a hardcore sports car, and because it debuted in 2008, the person making the rounds to promote it was seven-time F1 champion Michael Schumacher. They had Schumacher everywhere promoting the California, on the street, on the track, on anywhere you could put the car. And he was basically saying, it's beautiful, you can drive it every day, and it still feels like a Ferrari. The California debuted with a 4.3 liter V8 engine, which made 453 horsepower and 358 pound feet of torque. And this front mounting gave the California a near 50-50 weight distribution with 47% in the front and 53 in the back. And a 50-50 weight distribution is a huge thing in the car industry and among car enthusiasts because it's exactly what it sounds like. The more perfect the weight distribution in a car, the better that car handles. Imagine if you took a Hot Wheels car and you glued a marble on the front or the back of it and you sent it down a ramp. It's gonna wiggle a little bit, right? Now imagine you take that marble off and you have a nice weight distribution. It'll handle a lot better. The California's 453 horsepower goes to the rear wheels, and it was advertised as being able to go from zero to 60 miles per hour in less than four seconds, with a top speed of 193 miles per hour. When the California debuted, Ferrari's boss at the time, Luca Di Montezemolo, told reporters that it was important for a bunch of reasons. The California was meant to be complementary to, but different from, the F430, it was meant to be completely customizable, and it was meant to be able to hold whatever you needed to put in it, your luggage, your golf clubs, whatever else. He also said, and I quote, a Ferrari has to be like a good looking woman. You have to desire her. That is such a 2008 quote. Early reviews of the California were great, and Jason Camisa wrote for Motor Trend that the car was perfect except for its shift mapping. Basically, he said when it's in automatic mode, the California is programmed to find a happy medium between noise and fuel economy and all of that stuff. And so, let's say you're cruising along at 60 miles per hour and you need to punch the gas for some reason. Instead of downshifting to second, the car will downshift to fourth, so you have less oomph to accelerate with, right? Now you can get that oomph if you put it in manual mode, but in automatic mode, Jason said, yeah, that's not happening. I guess we'll find out in a second what that's like. Reviewers said the Ferrari California looked and felt like a Ferrari, and the first two years of production sold out almost immediately. But the California still got this reputation for being the softer Ferrari, even though that's what Ferrari told us it was gonna be the entire time. When people say Ferrari California, there's even a softer inflection in their voice. I guess it's just a testament to the fact that even if you're honest about who you are, people still sometimes hold it against you. That brings us to this car, the 2012 Ferrari California. Now, we've already talked about this car's stats, but we've also talked about a lot of other things. So let me remind you, up front, 
we have a 453 horsepower V8 that powers the rear wheels, and we have a seven speed dual clutch automatic. We also have this wonderful red color. It's called Rosso Corsa, which means racing red with a beige interior. This is so classic Ferrari. I love it. This car also has factory carbon ceramic brakes, probably because it's tired of you calling it soft. I haven't driven this car yet, but I really like the way it looks. Yes, it's got the rounder lines on it, and you could say it looks less like it wants to eat you and more like it just wants to transport you to dinner. But isn't that a good thing? Isn't diversity in an automaker's lineup a positive thing? Because if you have the hardcore scary wants to eat you Ferrari, why not also get the Ferrari that just wants to drive you through town and be fun at the same time? It's good to have options. And I like how this car looks. Everyone's tweeting me because I'm posting pictures of it and saying it looks like a little Miata and it's a lot bigger than one. But also look at the smile on the front end. It's got the little NC smile on it. It's happy. Trunk time. And this trunk is super interesting because the trunk doesn't end right here. It's all the way down here. Look at how big this trunk piece is because obviously we have our spot for our roof. So you need a little bit of extra space down here. Now, I don't think I'm gonna have much luck due to our um, roof space here, but we'll see how much I can stretch. Listen, if I were flexible, I would have a lot more luck here, but I'm not. <laughs> this trunk is half an Alanis if you were flexible. Yeah, well, that, that's not going. Mm -mm. We'll give it a, a third of an Alanis for sure. Welcome inside the Ferrari California. And there's a lot of cool stuff in here. I love this interior. It's beautiful. And I can't wait to take you through it. But there's one thing that stood out when I got in here. Got in the passenger seat and I looked at the dashboard. And right here, there's a little rectangular plaque. And on this plaque, Ferrari is engraved in it. Below that, we have the engraving of a Formula One car, and it says 31 Formula One world titles. Kimi Raikkonen won the Drivers' Championship in 2007. The last time Ferrari won a Constructor, which is the team title, was in 2008. The California debuted in 2008. Ferrari has not won since... <laughs> any idea of what it's going like for Ferrari and Formula One right now, just search Ferrari three tires pit stop. And you'll know, ex you'll, you'll have all that you need. You'll know exactly how it's going. <laughs> Inside here, we have four seats. Seats. The front two are seats for humans. The back two are purse shelves, but I'm going to try to get back there anyway. And I think What's really cool about the branding inside this car is that the juxtaposition of the typical Ferrari font, that like very straight, angular Ferrari font next to the California cursive logo is just so nice. It just makes you feel like this is the car you're supposed to relax in and grand tour in. I think it's great, great branding. I also really love the beige with the black in here. So these Daytona style seats with these black stripes cutting through are really, really beautiful. All oh, the prancing horse that just, just comes up from the headrests, just barely. It's really, really pretty. This car is 12 years old at this point, and there are some creases in this seat, but they look nice. It just looks used, not worn. I am a sucker for any car from the mid-2010s, which has a little screen and a bunch of buttons around it, and that's what this California has. We have this little center screen and then we have all of our buttons that we could ever need for climate control and everything like that. I think it was a beautiful time in between the no screen era of the like 2000s, the all buttons era and the all screens era of now when we had screen combo buttons. Bring back the 2010s. Sometimes on the upper door panel I feel like you'll have that harder material up here. This is so supple but also it looks brand new. It looks not worn at all. It's really, really nice. And oh, I just love to squish it. 
I also love that it seems like every car was doing the same air vents in the 2010s. You have the circular vent and the little silver accenting around it, but it's very plasticky. And the center part, the way you tell this apart from another car, is that we have a little prancing horse engraved in it. Let's get some fresh embarrassment, okay? It's been like probably two video minutes since I tried to get in the trunk. Time to get in the back seat. Okay. <laughs> I like to remind everybody every video that I'm five, eight and a half and sitting in the California, my, my head is on the roof when I'm like this. I'm back, but not all the way back. Not all the way back. Okay. Okay. That's a little butt. That's a little far. That's a little far. That's a little far. No. So realistically, someone could sit in this seat. They could put their knees up. All right. And I could sit right here with my knees around the seat and my head like this. Would it be comfortable? No. Because I'm like this, every time we hit a bump, it would just go, <laughs> and it would hurt, because that hurt. <laughs> this is a purse shelf. That's all you got back here. One of the things Ferrari claimed when the California came out was that this hard top could fold back in 14 seconds. So I thought it would be fun to time it. Ready? We're at 10 seconds. We're at 10. We're at 10. Fully locked at 19.75. So we all get a little slower with age. So here we are driving the Ferrari California. And yes, I am already driving. Usually I start talking to y'all before I start driving but the seller told me to warm up the car before we have any fun with it, which I totally respect, good advice. And so I just have been babying it around the neighborhood, basically. We're almost done warming it up. We're almost to the spot where it needs to go. All right, warm up is time, it's over. We're not gonna rip just yet. We're gonna go easy, we gotta get used to the car. But warm up time is over, let's go. It's amazing how I'm going 50 miles an hour and this is such a smooth ride. Like it's so comfortable in here. Wow. The seat behind me is stiff. Like it holds me in and there's a little bit of stiffness to the ride, but it's smooth. I'm comfortable in here. It's impressive. Wow. This is a grand tour for sure. I am touring and it is grand. This is so nice. This is such a nice afternoon drive car that can also handle anything you're doing on that afternoon drive. This is such a joy. I mean, I feel like I'm in a commercial with this car. I feel like I'm in the sports car commercial and everything's perfect and everything's right. And I'm at the wheel. That's how I feel in this car. And like, I haven't even done anything yet. And that's how I feel. I mean, the acceleration is beautiful, right? I didn't get my foot all the way down. I got it most of the way down and we weren't starting from a standstill. There are so many cars that are so fast these days that you get so numb to acceleration. It's like, I mean, does acceleration even matter at some point, you know? But the way this car feels when it's accelerating, it's just like you're slowly building up all that power and all that force and you can just kind of feel the breath getting sucked into your throat because you're impressed and I think that's amazing. Uh, all right we're gonna turn around and we're gonna floor it like for real for real gonna floor it. Here we go here we go. horsepower but the way this feels 
getting up to speed. Ugh. And just that little bit of uncertainty you feel in a powerful rear-wheel drive car where you go, oh, is the back end, is the back end gonna step out just a little bit? Like, ah, oh my goodness. Okay, let me tell you how everything else feels. When I put in steering inputs in the neighborhood at very low speeds, it's a very calm and easy going steering wheel. When I put in inputs when I'm going fast, it just perfectly turns with my hands exactly the gas pedal is light but has that little bit of tension to show you yes there is a lot of power under here be careful with it I mean oh wow 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 it's a Ferrari it's a Ferrari like everyone said when this car came out and like all the reviewers said this is a Ferrari haven't talked about the paddle shifters yet I actually haven't used them yet but I can if I want uh, perfect metal feel. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear the metally feel. Oh. oh my goodness. When those revs just like go to the moon. <laughs> Not only the feeling of the revs going to the moon, but just like the sound of it and just that little bit of feeling you get under the pedal when the revs just shoot to the moon. Oh, it's magical. Wow. And I know what you're all going to say. You're all going to go in the comments and you're going to say, manual transmission. I know. I know. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> the marketing was right. And if you took the marketing the wrong way and you decided this was a soft Ferrari, I don't know what to tell you. This is a Ferrari. All the way. And I mean that in the most respectful and admirable way possible. This is a really, really enjoyable driving experience. So that was the 2012 Ferrari California. This car filled an important hole in Ferrari's lineup and it told us what it was from the beginning. But most importantly, it's a Ferrari and it looks and acts the part. And if you need a Ferrari, this California is now available on cars and bids. You can check out more photos, see the full spec list, or maybe even bid on it at the link in the description of this video. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.